I got a thing, a doodad, a robotized trace and erase. It's a CNC plasma cutter from ArcDroid. They sent it to me and I'll show it to you later, but first I need to, no, I want to make a dedicated workstation for this and any general plasma cutting needs I may have and it's gonna go right here, not on the table. It's gonna go on the wall, the table has nothing to do with it. Yeah, that is uh, super flat. <laughs> Look at this. I had a clear horizontal surface for 30 seconds. It's already full of stuff. To make this next part easier, I went on a little side quest and went out and bought a welding table. It's a really cheap one, but it's better than the one I had before, which didn't exist, because I didn't have one. I just took all the footage off my camera and realized I had the shutter speed set wrong. So if you looked at any of the previous footage and wonder why there were ripples running down the screen, that's why. I had accidentally bumped it up to 80. Normally I keep it at 60 to match with the frequency of the grid because these LED lights aren't super smooth. But I didn't do that this time, so there were ripples. Here's a conundrum for you. I need to cut this sheet metal to make up the sides of the fume extraction box under the plasma table that I'm working on. But I don't have a plasma table yet, obviously. So should I cut this sheet metal with the plasma cutter and just deal with the fumes in the air? Or should I do it the old boring way with no fumes and use this sheet metal shear? Eagle-eyed viewers will notice I've already made up my mind. Turns out I was cutting this thin steel way too slowly, a fact I corrected about a quarter of the way through this cut. Plasma cuts can be really clean as long as the speed is right. By some almost unfathomable coincidence, the exact size of sheet metal that I need to wrap around the bottom and sides of my plasma cut table to make the downdraft table, did I mention I'm making a downdraft table? I'm making a downdraft table is exactly the size of this scrap piece of sheet steel that I had lying around. Unfortunately, to wrap around the sides means bending up this piece, and this is 48 inches wide. My bender's only 36 inches wide, so I can't do that. Instead, I'm gonna have to cut it. I need to cut out some little tabs to spot weld my bits of sheet metal together. And what better first use for the arc droid than this? I've just got this temporarily set up because the plasma table is obviously not done yet. So I'm going to use this to cut out 16 little squares to use as tabs out of this piece of scrap steel. I had the speed set way too low for the first pass, so I sped it up and cut out 16 more tabs. It still wasn't fast enough the second time, but it was better. Also, I burned my table. I spent all the time working on these little tabs to weld the corners together because I didn't think I would be able to weld the corners of these two thin pieces of sheet metal without burning through them, but I did just fine, so I may have wasted time with all those tabs. And it's raining very hard right now. I need to cut a hole in the bottom of this table for this dust collection fitting, which is a perfect excuse to show you the other cool feature of the ArcDroid, tracing. So I'm gonna just put, a, put this here. I've already marked four dots where the mounting holes go. I'll just do a vague outline of it. You can see wherever I move the arm is represented as a little green dot on the screen. So I can just start right here, do boop, 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 boop. 
boop, and I have defined a box that I want to cut out, and it will repeat that pattern in plasma mode. Now I can just swap out the stylus in for the plasma cutter, and go. Uh-oh. That's the problem. What's that mean? Well, that's an hour I'll never get back. Air FO3 means the shield cup. This guy is not installed. And it was, and it was tight. So I took the gun apart. Sorry. I took the gun apart. These two little contacts in here make contact with this rim and complete the circuit, and that's how the machine knows whether or not this cup is installed. The problem was that these two little pins had gotten pushed up into the housing of the torch handle, and they weren't making contact with the rim anymore, so it threw the fault code. So to fix it, I pushed them back down again, and to hold them there, I smeared some hot glue all over it. So I fixed my plasma cutter with a hot glue gun. But the question is, how was it working at all? How did this stop mid-cut? If these weren't making contact with the rim, weren't they never making contact? I have so many questions. But it works now, and hopefully the hot glue will hold, and I'm going to put this back together and continue with the cut that I started. That didn't work, the hot glue didn't hold it, so I already ripped it out, and this safety feature is going bye-bye, because it's not much of a safety feature if it just fails all the time. I'm just going to short these wires together and not have a cup sensor. Okay, plasma cutter, tell me, can I get on with it? Hey! Crank that. These pieces I cut earlier didn't come out remotely square, so I'm going to cut some better ones now. The plasma table will be hinged off the end of the shelf here so it can flip down and out of the way when I'm not using it, which will probably be most of the time. So to help this shelf support all that extra weight, I added these two vertical stabilizers. I painted it, and I added these legs. Now the first thought with these legs was make them hinged, have them fold away. But they're so dang long, I didn't know where to fold them to. There's not enough room to fold them that way or around, and if I fold them inward like this, then they'd have to overlap each other. So instead, I made them magnetically removable. I'm not sure I love this solution just yet, but it'll work, so moving on. Fume extraction when plasma cutting is extremely important, as you've already seen in this video. You don't want to be breathing that crap in. What I've been doing up to this point without any sort of fume extraction is to wear a respirator while I'm plasma cutting and then evacuate the room for at least three hours afterward to let the fumes settle. That's not very convenient. The two most common types of fume extraction or collection are a water table or a downdraft table. In researching for this video, I tried to look up which one is best, and what I found was a lot of plasma cutter enthusiasts yelling at each other. Y'all need to get a grip. Neither one is perfect. I chose to go with a downdraft table simply because this thing folds down. Much easier to do that if I don't have to drain out the water first. But I don't like the way a lot of these downdraft tables are implemented. What I've typically seen is the table is a big open hole, and at the bottom of this big open hole are a couple of gigantic fans that will, yes, suck out all of the fumes created by plasma cutting, but also all of the air in the room. And this is conditioned space. It's heated right now, and in the summer it's air conditioned. I'd like to suck out as little of that air as possible, and having a big open hole with fans at the bottom of it seems needlessly inefficient. Downdraft tables for woodworking are set up similarly to this welding table here. You got a box with a fan connected to it, and on top of that box is a flat surface full of holes to distribute the airflow across the table. Rather than having a big oversized fan in a centralized location sucking air from anywhere, you're controlling the airflow and distributing the sucking force across the whole surface of a table relatively evenly. 
I don't know why plasma downdraft tables are not set up like this, but there's no better way to find out than by trying it myself. If it works, it means I don't need as big of a fan, which means less conditioned air is being sucked out of my workspace, and my plasma table can be smaller. Rather than having a giant hopper directed towards a big oversized fan at the bottom of it, I can just have a shallow box with an air duct. But before I can do any of that, I have to cut a hole in the wall for a vent to the outside so the fumes have somewhere to go. Yeah, that bit wasn't long enough for my girthy wall cavity, so I got a longer one. The more clock, the better. And this is all I use for my fume extractor. It's a one horsepower dust collector from Harbor Freight. I bought this thing over a year ago, and I don't remember what I bought it for, so it'll work perfect for this. And it connects up to this dust collection fitting at the bottom of the table, the hole for which you saw me cut earlier. The surface of a plasma table is usually bits of flat steel set vertically, so the plasma cutter can nick it all at once, but it's very unlikely that it's gonna cut all the way through that. I'm gonna use this whole stack of U-channel, or C-channel, that I got from taking apart my school bus. It's right over there out of frame. I don't remember what part of the bus these came from, but they'll work perfectly for the top of this plasma table if I cut them in half lengthways. And they're dual purpose. If I were to just use flat pieces across the table, the space between the slats would be wide open airspace, which is no good for airflow distribution. When I cut these U-channel pieces in half, there's one I've already cut in half, I end up with two bits of angle. And I can set these side by side and control the air gap in between them because they've got that little angle bracket on the bottom. This is how I'm going to restrict the airflow and distribute the airflow across the table by defining how far apart to set these. These are all cut to length. Now I need to bifurcate them lengthwise and to do that I'm going to use the plasma cutter. My fume extraction isn't totally set up but if I do the cutting directly over top of the airport in the middle of the table it should get most of everything. If it doesn't I can just leave the room for another couple hours. That's not annoying at all. That went better than expected. Now you might have noticed I'm using PVC plastic hoses for the fume extraction and extraction of little droplets of molten steel. Now I figured the force of the air blowing past it would be enough to cool down these droplets of molten slag enough so that the plastic hoses wouldn't sustain any damage. And that turned out to be true. But what I didn't expect was this plastic air fitting at the bottom of the table that I was shooting the plasma torch directly at was completely unharmed. I left it unshielded with any sort of foil tape or anything just to see what would happen. I didn't expect nothing to happen to it. The steel right over here where I was shooting the plasma torch, it got so hot that it scorched and warped. But this was totally unharmed, I guess because of all the air flowing past it. And here they are all together in situ. They're baffling. I, I don't mean they're confusing, I mean they're acting as baffles. You can see the controlled air gaps between each of them. Now I need to figure out a way to attach them all together into three separate grates because right now they're only supported on one side and they don't exactly stand up on their own. Like that. Like it, they're still lift out grates and everything. This whole table I designed on the fly. It's how I like to work and it ended up nothing like I originally planned it. Originally it was supposed to be a water table but I decided against that. It was going to have a one two by four section here and then another that flips off over here to expand it but I thought that seems excessive and unnecessary. And the tops was not supposed to be slats. What I got for the tops were two of these expanded steel sheets. I decided not to go with these for a number of reasons. First of all, if you plasma cut in the same spot over and over again, it'll cut through this a lot more quickly than it'll cut through this. And it's not flat, and I couldn't figure out a simple and elegant way to mount it to the table without welding it, and I didn't want to weld it to the table because if a small piece got through this mesh, then I'd have to take out the grinder to get that small piece, etc. The, the reasons go on. But this is how it ended up. I think we should test it.
Add a couple last minute things to the table, like screws to hold the slats in place so they don't fall out when I flip the table down. And I welded this little tab to the bottom of the table to give it a place to clamp on the ground for the plasma cutter. Does my fume extraction work? Yes! Does it work better than a big open hole? I don't know. It works. So that's really all I can ask for. I don't know if I wasted time by trying to distribute the airflow or not. It works. Almost forgot to tell you about the ArcDroid. It's a CNC plasma cutter and full disclosure, this is not sponsored, but they did send me this free of charge and they told me exactly what to say about it. They said, do whatever you want to with it. This is probably the most accessible CNC plasma cutter on the market. Obviously you have to have your own plasma cutter too, so that's some added cost, but it's more than just cost. First of all, there's the form factor. Instead of having a big CNC gantry that takes up all the space all the time, you have this little pod here and an arm that extends out to do all your work, but tucks away when you're not using it. A fact that I took full advantage of by making this fold away table here. It's also relatively portable. You can just take this whole unit and plop it on a piece of steel that you want to cut circles in or whatever. There's this stylus, which I briefly showed you. You can use this to trace out any parts you want to cut, and then the machine follows it up with the plasma cutter, so you don't need a computer at all to operate this thing. But you can use a computer if you want to. You can import a DXF. By the way, the whole thing is controlled through this touchscreen right here. You can import a DXF, those little tabs that I cut out earlier but ended up not using. I drew those up in vCarve, exported them as a DXF, and then imported them into this thing. If you want more control, you can use Fusion 360. Really, the sky's the limit. You can operate this thing however you want to. Probably the only downside to this machine is because of this whole thing, it has to use inverse kinematics to figure out where the plasma torch is in space. So it needs to know exactly where it is, and you have to run a calibration routine every once in a while with both the stylus and the plasma torch so it can figure out exactly where the point of either one is in space which is how I ended up with this smiley atrocity. Rather than trace out my Sharpie marks with the tracing pin designed for such task, I used the tip of the plasma torch, which doesn't work because the plasma torch and the pin occupy a different point in space. So if the machine thinks I'm tracing out the design with the pin, but I'm actually using the torch, it's not just wrong by an offset. All of the math is screwed up and I end up with this thing. I'll name him Billy. He's got hair too. Now the reason I accepted the Arcdroid and set up a whole plasma station for it is because on my other channel I'm Tesla swapping this and the next step is to fabricate motor mounts.